Ah, nice. So that's where we left off, I remember now. <coughs> okay, let's start here. Ugh. <coughs> I'm hungover as fuck. <laughs> Great start. Oh, yeah, I forgot this is X to proceed. Some of these games, man, when you get them from a storefront, it's like X to proceed, and then some are Japanese ports, and then it's like Circle to proceed, and then you end up just going back and forth. Because you switch from game to game, and some change it, and some don't. Okay, so, um... Uh, start off quite slow. I remember I was getting wrecked on the 80s. I was doing okay on this, and I was doing pretty easy on these. So let's just warm up on the beginning points. There's only one left, so it's like... Full LP! Except, I feel like shit. <laughs> Last night I went to a bar. I had a Cuba Libre. A shot. I I pre-drank some coffee tequila. I then went out and had a Cuba Libre with Havana Club in it, which I cannot fucking stand. Um, Patron Gold as a shot. Uh, Long Island iced tea. I think another Cuba Libre. A uh, very nice Japanese gin called Soku Gin. I don't know if it's Suntory or not. I don't know anything about gin. I was like, oh look, gin. I'm going to try some gin. So I literally had basically every spirit. Because you've got to think, what's in a Long Island? A lot of shit, right? A lot of different spirits. So that probably is a bit of a catch-all in itself. No, no. <laughs> Go home. I am home. Go home, you're drunk. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> You're not my supervisor. Oh, that's break. Yeah, I remember now. <laughs> it's already going bad. <clears throat> Out the way, Bell. <laughs> Bell. Yeah, I'm winning. It's really annoying, one of my mates bought me a dating simulator on Steam and didn't realize that I don't have a gaming PC anymore because the last time he saw me I had a gaming PC and it blew up because I bought it in Hong Kong for cheap and it was not a real one. Um, or it had some shitty component in it and they were just getting rid of it. Um, <laughs> literally blew up and started emitting smoke. That was fun. Never beat Metal Gear Solid 5 because of that. I was enjoying it and thought, yeah, I'm gonna get into this. But yeah, like now I have a MacBook Air and a PS4. And MacBook Airs are pieces of shit, <laughs> especially with Catalina. It's just like, oh yeah, I want a game, and it's basically like, well, fuck you. to fuck up this <laughs> rolling corner. So yeah, like he tries, he gave me, I don't know how to say, how to fool boyfriends, the pigeon dating thing. And I was like, yo, I'm so going to LP this on my channel and I have come up across basically every single thing <laughs> saying, possibly telling me, you cannot LP this game. It's like, first of all, my laptop's like, nah man, I didn't even have Steam installed on it, what's the fucking point, it's a MacBook Air, it's just gonna fill up a hard drive and shit. I mean, I can play Darkest Dungeon, which I used to get pretty neat at. <clears throat> I was doing strats and shit, I had a, I was like running some of the wiki and stuff for a while or something like that. I had my own like thing where I was talking about tech and shit. Uh, I used to go really big into Darkest Dungeon, then if, then I left it for ages, a load of updates changed the, the way things worked, and I just lost, like, where the meta is now on a lot of those character types and 
new character types came in and they nerfed stuff and changed properties to like a lot of what the bounty hunter can do and the occultist, which were my favorite duo. And the Gravedigger used to be OP as fuck, but now, and I still have a pretty OP Gravedigger, but they changed a lot of her moves so that they're less OP. But she was had good range moves and good close-up in-your-face moves, and she could shift, much like the uh, Highwayman can. Um, but yeah, like, I kind of gradually fell out of that, and I never got back in. So I thought, well, you know, now I'm LPing, maybe at some point I'll... I'll, uh... <laughs> get back into it, but I don't think with this poxy little uh, MacBook Air I got, because it's the smallest hard drive model, it's like I got it super cheap, it's really for editing work documents, and I'm using it to LP, it doesn't like it. So yeah, he gave me the Pigeon Dating Sim, and I'll, I keep promising him that I'm going to download it and play it at least, and then hopefully LP it, because it should be a much less convoluted path for me to do that than record my PS4 stuff. Uh, but like, um, yeah, it's just every single thing that could possibly go wrong has been going wrong. Like, I've got like the wrong OS. It's saying, fuck you, I won't install it. It's saying... Catalina won't support this, it's like, oh, like, everything. And then today, my uh, VPN cracked out, because install and update with ExpressVPN, and I was like, oh, okay, and it just fucked the VPN up, and I was like, wow, great, <laughs> great install, guys, can I now go back and install the old version? No. I'm like, wow, fuck you. So what seems to be the problem? Well, there's this big fucking banner preventing me from doing anything saying, please sign into your Wi-Fi network, even though you're signed into my Wi-Fi network. And it's just saying, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And I'm like, well, it looks like I'm not downloading anything soon or uploading anything. Thanks, asshole. <laughs> because they're not even acknowledging that it's a problem or letting me install the previous version. And I'm just like... I'm pretty sure before I can install previous versions of this app and now I can't all of a sudden and it's just conveniently around the time you went fuck off Chinese users apparently because it looks like that's what's happened man I need to move country I swear to fucking god you don't know how fucking pissed off you get when you can't do a lot of stuff, you realize how fucking frustrating it is after a while. And you get treated like a second class citizen as well, like, fucking sucks. But anyway, um. Uh. <coughs> yeah. It's, see, like, it, the difficulty in handling the bikes changes massively. I think I've got it on max. Oh, I had it on high. Uh, traction control, and it's just like I'm not feeling any jerk at all. And on all the others, it's pulling out from underneath me as the power goes up, so obviously. Technical rider. Something else, because I skipped it. <laughs> I got a trophy, everyone. Look at all the identical bikes. I have King Zack. So now I've done that whole era, unless they're gonna unlock a secret rival challenge. A lot of racing games kind of suck the fun out of a lot of this. They just go, here's a grid, here are all the tracks, here are all the bikes, go. And you're like, not like, oh, cool, you came first, that's fucking awesome, oh my god, yeah, like, unlock all the secret shit that people who actually win the game get. It's really turned into, like, I noticed this on Dirt 4, and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I noticed this on Dirt 4 really hard, where it was, um, I think I tried that one, and that one, and that one. Maybe I did. I 
was I saying? Oh, my head hurts. Um, God, I lost my trailer for entirely. I have to roll it back just to work out what the fuck I was saying. So we went from a 125 to a 750. Noticing through the timeline that it was quite late in Ducati's career that they settled on we are going to be red. <laughs> like we have decided our signature colour now is red, but like a lot of their prior stuff was like silver and yellow and just various colours that they felt like. So I got this weird thing as well I noticed where um, nowadays whenever I get drunk I start talking about burning the churches for some reason and I'm like every time I get back home and I wake up the next day I'm like oh I was talking about burning churches to random strangers again wasn't I? <laughs> Good job there's no religion in this country. Not allowed. That I'm honestly like sitting here going Man, I'm just going to save up some money and be the first millennial ever to actually be able to afford a house because I'll go over to Vietnam where apparently foreigners are allowed to buy houses and they're ridiculously cheap. Thailand, they're ridiculously cheap, but you have to go through a lot of rigmarole and basically not own your own house and have like a Thai business do it for you because natural Thais aren't allowed to buy houses or something. So I thought, well, you know, Vietnam's got some nice beaches, and I want to be a homeowner, stick my middle finger up to the boomers who fucking destroyed the housing market, <laughs> you know, oh yeah, that's really worth a quarter of a million, well, fuck you, <laughs> for tw like 20,000 pounds equivalent, I could go buy a house on the beach in a country where no one's going to think to look for me, and buy motorcycles and shit. I've leaked my plans, now they'll all know. Ah, who am I kidding? No one watches this. Uh, <coughs> I'm just trying to work out whether or not they have a heavily censored internet as well, because it's like censorship works in multiple ways, where it's like, we are censoring these things because we believe them to have anti-Vietnamese communist articles and like hate speech towards the government, and we're bo blocking everything except the propaganda that we want you to believe. China is the latter one, much like North Korea, and I think Russia does a similar thing, but you'd have to, I've never been in Russia. That's bullshit, I have no idea what I'm talking about, shut up. <laughs> um, but like, um, China man, it is just ridiculous. What am I doing? You're literally like, oh great, what can I do if I don't have a VPN? Oh, look at like the state approved app and the state approved game. And I'm not even fucking kidding. You buy a PS4 and the Chinese store is like, it is free games and that's it. And you're like, are you fucking kidding me? And they're like, yeah. And you're like, oh, and then they have a big banner saying, celebrating Chinese gaming and you're like oh okay let's see what the Chinese have and it's like two games and you're like what the fuck <clears throat> this is a prime opportunity for you guys to make up your own games and create a burgeoning like video gaming industry because it's like the Japanese are very pro-Japanese for their game industry they always prioritize their own work you've literally forced it so that we can only play your games and you have two in their shit <laughs> you know <clears throat> they're expensive and they're shit and they don't make any sense. But I mean, I'd play Jank if it was cheap, but it's not. 
you know? And like, you know, I'm not going to get an account where I can't do anything <laughs> just so that I can play one dank ass Chinese game which I have no idea what it's talking about because there's no other option but Chinese for like everything, menu subs, everything. I'm not even joking man, the only reason Wipeout was available is because I'm pretty sure Sony has some sort of deal where it just says Wipeout is available, it is the launch title, you will have it in your country. It's literally a spaceship racing game, there's no blood, no violence, no anything, there's nothing offensive to it at all. You can take the music out if you don't like that music, I'll put instrumental versions in if you don't like the lyrics. And like literally, I feel like that's available in every country, man. <clears throat> every time that fucking sand trap. Because like, you can get the Chinese version here, and I have it. And like literally, I think Sony does a thing where it's like, you can buy that everywhere. But weirdly, Loco Roku is not available here, and you're like, oh yes, this is highly offensive to the Chinese. <laughs> Big big blobs floating around collecting things, how offensive. Because you're thinking that's another one of those harmless, kind of, is it Sony owned? I don't know. One of those uh, IPs where you're like, that should just be available everywhere. Who's going to be offended by this? It's literally nothing. And it's like, with China, it's not a case of if they're offended by it, it's, you know, you're allowed six things this month to come across. Okay, you chose the top sellers that don't have blood and violence in, okay, that's like, these ones, okay. <laughs> and people are like, how come there's no Fortnite? You know why? Because they chose PUBG. And it's literally a case of you can have one, and then the government says no to everything else. So all of the kids I teach are in like middle school are like, yeah man, PUBG, PUBG, have you heard of this new one the West has? called Knight of the Fortress, and they'll be like, oh, you mean Fortnite, and they're like, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, that's been out for a while, and they're like, oh, yeah, I saw it when I was outside of the, outside of China, uh, my friends, when I was on an exchange, showed me it, it's so cool, and I'm like, yeah, and you're never going to get the more cartoony, more kid-friendly version of a Battle Royale thing, because China says, fuck you, you can have one. It's really weird when you get into censorship in this country. It's the opposite of what you expect. Everywhere else it's like, ban what offends the government before it can reach the populace. That makes sense. I'm pretty sure that's how every country does it, right? China, on the other hand, does it the other way, which is everything is banned except things that you heavily lobby for us to bring over that we think will make us a lot of money by bringing it over. So it's like, Oh, surefire hits like Avengers. So they'll bring Avengers across and everyone goes, Oh my fucking god, Avengers! But like, I'm like, hey guys, did you see Sonic the Hedgehog? And they're like, Sonic the who now? Because like, of course that wouldn't be brought over, because it's not a blockbuster hit guaranteed, is it? <laughs> it's fucking Sonic, and it flopped in our country. So I died there. Uh, let's go back to doing the Super Sport, I like this one. I'm obviously D, D tier as a human being because I can't get above to see. Sounds like my grades in college. There was some lag between that, but I'm pressed. Holy shit, I thought it didn't register. Oh man. Yeah, I need to move somewhere. So I think I'm trying to research what the Vietnamese net situation is like because I was like, is there censorship? And they're like, yes. I'm like, can we access? The, you know, and you have to start looking for specific things to kind of like just, you know, to work out what's okay and what's not. So you have to type in, is Facebook available? Is Google available? And they're like, it's available, but sometimes they black it out for a long period and then say, what do you mean black it out? That wasn't us. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, they're one of those governments in Vietnam. Where it's just like, oh yeah, something bad happened that made Vietnam look like shit or whatever. Or like some guy was posting anti-Vietnam shit and we found out about it on Facebook, so we blocked Facebook for the two months that was in the news, and you're just like, 
that sounds like something that would really piss me off, but then again, I don't use Facebook, so... <laughs> like, oh yeah, how does this motorbike game not have the Isle of Man TT, but have whales? I mean... Why, and also, why does every rally game never have a New Zealand stage? Because, like, New Zealand, there's quite a lot of rallying over there. Oh, I mean, I guess it's not as popular, but I don't, I don't know. <coughs> uh, I'm just talking bullshit because I'm trying to swim my way through the gin-induced fog that is my brain right now. So if I'm making no sense in this recording, just take it to be that I've been drinking a lot of gin, or I did last night, and I have not been able to function today properly, so I'm just doing this instead. Yeah, I'm thinking about moving to Vietnam, just because it's warmer, it's sunnier, still communist, still a lot of censorship, but it's like handled in a different way. I don't know if it's better, because I need to do a lot of research, because over here it's like, oh, you earn lots of money, you should be happy. Oh, you want to take the money out of the country where it can't be given back to the Chinese? No. And you're like... So what's the point in me earning these bison dollars, you know? There's nothing here to buy either. Like, really, it's a case of, like, after the Americans and them had a fallen out, all of the American goods and services got removed from China, which means there were Harley-Davidson garages, and then there weren't Harley-Davidson garages, and now there's sort of Harley-Davidson garages, but they're actually independents, who just said, hey, man, we paid a lot for this. Let us carry our product and let us sell it because we still have them right now, but like their deal, their like deals with Harley are kind of not great at the moment. So getting new stock is very hard and it's, incre it's increasing the prices of Harleys even further in this country than the exorbitant price they already are here. Because the way the Chinese deter spending on foreign goods in China is by making the tax ludicrously high. So like if a Harley Davidson is say 10 grand in pounds in my country, I mean, it's never that cheap, but maybe the, like, the base model of like the street SIF 750, if you're lucky, used, but whatever. If it's say 10,000 there, it will be like almost like another like 50% added on top in this country, just because it's like, oh, filthy American white man machine, get it, don't buy it. Nobody buy it. Only the hyper-wealthy can buy. But you see them everywhere. That's what's so fucking weird. Like, you're thinking, the average Chinese person lives in... They either live in poverty or they're hyper-rich. There's no middle class in China. It's really fucked up wealth distribution, a lot of disparity. And it's like, you either see a guy and he's literally pulling a car and he has nothing. Or he's going around on a motorcycle. How the fuck do you expect? How do you? How the fuck can you afford a Harley Davidson? And everyone's like, "Oh yeah, English teachers in this country. You guys are so rich. You get so much money." And you're like, "Huh? I can't afford that though." So you know, and I've, like, there's a guy right near my house. Two guys, in fact, who have these. Like, and it's not the cheap ones. It's the Roadsters. Yeah. Fuck you, whales! <laughs> See, I can do that one. So apparently I'm just D tier at being a human. I really do feel pretty D tier this morning though, so... Oh, it's 3pm, what the fuck? <laughs> hey guys, I was glad that you saw my leap strats there. <clears throat> I don't know if there's a difficulty level. <coughs> you know, I didn't see any in any of the uh, menus, so yeah, I'm not really sure if that's uh, a thing. I've been fiddling around with the audio, I don't know if it sounds better. It probably doesn't because my voice sounds like shit, but that's because of the beer, the, the long beers. Uh, I mean... did this with a Panther before and got wrecked, didn't I? I like the Panther, it's a really cool design. 
but like I don't know why they put it in the same thing because it's like if there's any streets that's just sealing by it each time I guess it's better on the corners but whatever 900 but it's only 864 to CC so I suspect people know but I don't like is there like a thing where, like, what's the amount that they're allowed to be away from something without calling it? Because obviously they can't call like a 125 or 900 super sport. So it's like, what is the amount of uh, CC displacement they can be away from it so that they can approximate and round up, you know? Because you see some bikes are like, <clears throat> like this one is the 900 and it's actually 864 CC, which is few more cc's lower like i know it's not like the most important thing but like is there like a thing saying that you're not allowed to go above a certain number of like difference and you'd have to call it an 850 after a while or is it just i got it over 850 so it's now a 900 you know 851 cc is a 900 guys like you know Vietnam sounds like a better place for me personally because it's like um, everyone there rides a motorbike, motorbikes are cheap and you don't have to really get a license because nobody seems to have one and nobody gets stopped for it. Uh, over here they're very bureaucratic and they're very racist, extremely racist to the point that it would be easier for me to get a fake license than it would be for me to get a real one because every time I go, even if I have all of the things, the lady behind the desk goes, ew, white, and stops talking to me and refuses to serve me and I'm like so you're just allowing this shit to happen and they're like yep so it's like literally it's easier for me to just like get a fake and then they're like foreigners do crime and it's like oh really it's almost like your system's racist <laughs> but you know like um it's like I'm used to that because it's like the same in Britain except the British uh, bureaucracy they just look at everyone like they're scum and wasting their time for showing up and not knowing exactly what form to fill out. So it's almost exactly the same, but I'm kind of bored of that. I kind of left the UK because I was so bored of the casual racism, the pencil pushing bureaucracy, and then I came to the even worse version of that as an outside person, and I'm just like, okay, I need to go somewhere where there's zero fucks given. So, you know, Hot weather, beaches, tasty food, cheap property, cheap motorcycles, less censored internet, question mark? Sounds like a good idea to me. Don't get paid as much, but holy shit, like, what's the point in getting paid millions in fucking Mickey Mouse fun bucks, you know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, I get paid so much here, I can't use it and it's worthless. Cut to that meme receiving the paper from the Gravity Falls guy. Wow, this is worthless. <laughs> like, you know. When you say, we're gonna pay you so much money in RMB. It's basically saying, we're paying you in this currency that we won't allow you to have, and most currency changes won't actually stop. And you're just like, oh, great. You can store it in this bank that uses a credit card that can't be used anywhere but China. It's called Union Pay. It's great. Sure it is. I'm sure it is. Yeah, fuck this place. <laughs> Fucking hard. Be glad when I get out, man. Oh, I'm dead. because I was bitching about China so much. That's why I'll die. <coughs> Anywho. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> no, don't go by, 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 don't go by. Ah! <laughs> Takes a while to speed up this one.
yeah, I need... One of my mates is in Japan, and he keeps saying Japan's really good, and then he said a hundred things that made me was like, wow, fuck Japan. <laughs> he was like, yeah, oh, it's really good here. You're not allowed to rent most properties because Japanese letters are racist. Okay, you're not allowed to make noise in your apartment or have pets. Okay, you're not allowed to have a motorcycle or do anything because you're a foreigner. This sounds like shit. <laughs> this sounds like a nightmare. And he's like, no, it's great because the food's good. I'm like, great, so I can walk around and basically be treated like shit by the system. Be treated slightly less racistly by every other person there but at the end of the day still be treated like a third class citizen. Like, sounds awful, man. He's like, nah, it's great, you just have to use headphones all the time. It's like, awesome. You hear some bullshit, man. You're like, you come out here and you think, I'm gonna go and travel everywhere, and then you're like, well, not there, because they're super racist there. And then you go, oh, and not there, because the system's super racist there and I don't get paid well there, and then you go, oh, so I guess it's just these two places. <laughs> it goes from every country in Asia to, if I go there, I'll probably be killed by the locals, and the police will do nothing about it, to, I will be paid in pennies, and end up bankrupting myself by living there, and then there's the alternative, I will literally not be allowed a visa, or to be given a house, or to rent a house, because everyone there fucking hates you or the system just doesn't want you there, and you're like, alrighty, <laughs> that drops my thing right down. Uh, everyone was like, Korea's great, unless you go outside and a Korean guy decides that he's a bigoted fuckwit and wants to start a fight with you because the police will do nothing and actually side with the Korean guy, even if the Korean literally comes up to you and threatens your life with a knife. And you're like, oh great, they sound awesome. <laughs> Sounds like a great place. And they're like, yeah, great food, great beer, and it's like, yeah, and great ability to get the shit kicked out of you and not be allowed to do anything about it. Sounds awesome. And everyone's like, just put your headphones in and pretend they're not there. And I'm like, or not. <laughs> like, you know, same in Taiwan, I heard, but I've heard varying things about both countries, I should say. I'm just talking about the negatives at the moment. I've heard Korea is quite nice for a bunch of other reasons. I've heard the language is hard to learn, though. Uh, I've heard Taiwan is nice, but I don't want to go live in Taiwan, because the only anecdotes I've heard from people who actually live there that I've met who are also English teachers, was I came out of a bar once and a bunch of guys tried to beat the shit out of us because they thought it would be a great insurance scam and they were just basically letting us beat the shit out of them after threatening us with baseball bats because if they do it, it's technically something like under their insurance is written as, oh well, they'll just get it signed off as like a fraud thing. So they were all getting TVs for like trying to fight some foreigners or something. And I was like, that sounds like something I don't want to deal with. I'll try to get a bike. Yeah, it sounds like something I don't want to deal with, so I'll just leave that as well. Also, like, I don't know. I lived in Hong Kong for a while. It's completely different from, and I've seen Macau, and for some reason, Taiwan just really never made me go, ooh, Taiwan, you know, like, um, <clears throat> I'm probably missing out on some great stuff in Taiwan. I've heard that, like, I've had some of their soft drinks uh, and food and stuff in, like, Hong Kong because there's a few Taiwanese there and there's, like, a lot of their restaurants there. But it's, like, it's not my favorite thing in the world, you know, Taiwanese food. So I've always just kind of gone, uh, <laughs> you know. Am I going to win this one, or are we just going to fuck up again? I mean, I came third last time or something. Oh, that's got grip. It's grippy. But I'm shit. No, I'm shit! Oh, I can't get around a corner. 
I think like the racing line's pretty good, but I feel like it kind of lies to you. You gotta get further out sometimes on these bikes to get around the corner. See? Or maybe I'm just bad. They're all doing it. Put your faith into the bike. Feel the bike midichlorians. Fuck you, Kozlov. Look at this Kozlov. Why do they put their names above them? Like, it's AI, man. It, you know? Oh, just so you know, this is like... Wood. Great, he's got wood. So, what? I guess that's if you're online, that makes more sense, but I don't need to know that I was just overtaken by 420k dash stun. <laughs> 320 no scope XX shot of his abs. That's why I, that's why I gave up playing CSGO. Because my experience with CSGO was get shot, see a random white dude's abs, and go, Great, am I supposed to be turned on now? I just got shot by a guy, and he's like, Hey, check out my rocking body. And I'm like, Great. So. Awesome. <laughs> like, you know, what What do I take from this? You trying to fuck me? Like, what? You, you already fucked me in the game. Are you just trying to, like, get some, get some poon? <laughs> like, you know, what is that? Like, oh yeah, a girl will be really hot if I sh girl Girls get wet if they get shot in, um, in a video game and then they see a guy's abs, they slide into those guys DMs. Oh, I see you shot me in the game where you can shoot something else into me later, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh god, that is so crass. But you know, like, you just said, oh, where is the logic of this? Are you just trying to, like, are they even your abs or did you just steal them from somebody? Is that not even you? That, that would be awkward, wouldn't it? Here's a picture of Brad Pitt. You were just shot by Brad Pitt. It's like, I think Brad Pitt has better things to be doing playing CSGO, but I mean, he might play CSGO, I don't know. Let's, let's go ask Brad Pitt. <coughs> I'm winning! Yay! I like this bike, because it's really easy to drive, even by a moron like me. Ugh. Yeah, I was, I've never been good online at anything. I was start, I started to play Street Fighter V online for a while, because uh, playing the AI in Street Fighter games, you get to a certain level and they're just, you know, input reading scum of the earth, where they just block everything you do and throw something out that's always a frame better than yours, and you're just like, fuck you. So you go online and it's like, oh, I can play against people who are actually fallible because they're human. <laughs> and it's like, after fighting the like AI for a while, you have to learn basically how to play the game again because you're now playing against people like you. So it's like, the, the best way to play the game basically, because it's like, well, this is more like, I don't know, a realistic example of like, um, if you were going to play it competitively, probably a lot more than like fighting the AI is. So I started doing that for a little while and I got wrecked, but then I won a few times with Alex on Street Fighter V, but it's pretty hard for me because I'm terrible and my mate, whose version of the game it was, was playing Ryu and he got super salt real quick because there are a lot of shit internet connections who were just scamming around and like hacking the game and shit and like teleporting around and he was just like when they shouldn't be able to teleport and like Ryu and stuff was just pinging around the screen and we were just like yeah this is bullshit and he got legit mad so that didn't last very long. I played some online Tekken and I actually got pretty good wins on that like I actually was winning a lot with King. That's another problem about living in China as well, you know, the online gaming scene is going to fucking suck if everything's banned, right? Like, who am I going to fight? <laughs> like, you know, I'm like the only guy who's got, like, Tekken here, and you can imagine trying to get on, like, the Hong Kong servers from where I am in China is going to mean that my, like, ping rate sucks. If I can even get on them without it dropping repeatedly. Yeah, man. 
I used to do that. That's like the full experience of my online gaming. When I had a 360, I did some online gaming of, um, Gears of War was always with friends, uh, mostly Horde mode and sometimes Deathmatch. Uh, but always with friends because I didn't want to deal with people online because it just didn't make any sense and they did dumb plays the whole time. And I was like, what the fuck are they doing? They're just going to standing by that cover and getting shot each time. They're just feeding the other team. What the fuck? Uh, and I played Dirt for a little bit online. Dirt 2. That was kind of fun. Uh, and I did Burnout Paradise online for a little while, but it wasn't I don't really know what the point was, because you play Burnout Paradise online with like eight other guys who are all strangers to you, maybe two of them are friends and they're doing their own thing, and you're doing something else, somewhere else, and then they're like, oh yeah, they want to all go do this thing where they get an achievement for jumping over eight cars in a row or something. And you're just, like, not getting the memo because you're not friends with any of them because you don't know who the fuck these people are and you're just driving around like, <laughs> just like, what, what am I doing? Then you just go around pissing people off after a while because you're just chasing them down and taking them down because you're bored. It's like, the leaderboard system was better on that game. I think it was better to just play the leaderboards and then all your mates, like, a lot of my mates had Burnout Paradise and we'd just all be trying to, like, beat each other's online times on the road rules and stuff, so... Alright, more bikes I can't drive. Monster 900, 916, 748. Ooh, in two colors. That's a horrible shade of yellow. I'm sorry, people who like yellow. I should check my phone, but I really can't be bothered. I mean, it's got like an exclamation mark saying, Quick! Sudden brace! Yeah! The 90s! God, I'm a dick. <laughs> Stelvio. Stelvio? Stelvio. Eligible bikes B category. B, B. Oh my god, there's so many. But this is from the 80s. I'm sure this will go well. I mean, we could try the Monster, uh, or we could try one of the really fast ones on the 748, or 916. I want to try the Monster 900. I always used to like the Monster 900, just to look at. Not really yellow, but whatever. <coughs> oh, man. Look, it's cool. King of falling off. He changed his jacket because it's the 90s now. Gotta keep up with the fashions, man. Cool sound. I'm gonna trash it around this corner. Whoa! This feels very grippy around the corners, it's grippier than the other ones, so I'm not having as trouble getting around the corner as I was with the Super Sports when I was doing that last session. Uh, that's pretty good. Nice sound to it. Very forgiving there, even though I fucked that corner so hard. Yeah, I like this bike. They managed to do a great deal to make this bike highly playable, probably because like everyone knows the monster. When the tutorial is the monster six nine six, and it's just like, look, 
learn how to drive the bike and it just makes you do laps until you feel comfortable in this game, showing you how the system works. Wow, this bike, man. Impressive, this video game bike. One day I will afford you Ducati Monster, but I probably won't get you in yellow, I'm not really a fan. Me and my, well, one of my mates, he, uh, what was the first bike he had, like a Yamaha or something, or other, like an MT-09 or something. And then, like, when he got his next uh, thing up, he got a Kawasaki Ninja that was a 600 that was limited. And then when he aged out for the full license, he's now got a Kawasaki, the, the big Ninja, the really big Ninja. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. But, like, I was on the back of his 600 one, and I was just like, fuck! <laughs> like, you know, those things are fast enough as it is, so I can't imagine what his, like, nearly... Uh, it must be a liter bike, I have to ask him. Maybe it's not, I don't know. I'm not very big on the... I'm not very big on the know-how of every Kawasaki Ninja. I'm just like, fast bike, green. <laughs> green fast bike. And I'm like, this, this bike, green, this bike go very fast. And, um, you know, it makes a loud noise and it makes me nearly shit myself <laughs> every single time I get on it. But, um, e even if I'm not driving, and I have full confidence in my mate when he's driving it, and I was sat on the back and it's just like, on the 600, I was like, fucking hell, so I almost want to go back to the UK where he's based. And just be like, drive me around on your crazy, crazy Kawasaki, uh, your even bigger Kawasaki. He was looking at the Suzuki Lever bike for a long time, but couldn't find it. I don't know why he didn't get any, and I think he was just too expensive for him. Or, like, he felt like it was not, like, a good option, or he couldn't find a good example used or something, and he ended up getting this instead. He's always been a big mark for Kawasaki's, if you ask me. But like uh, he's he's open to many things. He's very big fan of the super sports. Very like <laughs> he's very good at being a motorcyclist. He's like very talented, and he's very like full. He's got the knowledge. He knows the highway code. He's like very skilled as well behind the bike. But even he has accidents, and even every time he has an accident, the bike's been put in the shop for three months because all of the carbon fibers come off, and he's been put in hospital because he's like broken his ankle or his wrist or his uh, uh, collarbone or something like that. You know what I mean? And it's like, or his fingers sometimes because he gets trapped behind it. And it's just like, yeah, that's that's what riding a motorbike's like. And a lot of people are like, you know, the normies are always like, oh, why would you ever get on something that can do that to you? It's like, why would you get into a giant steel cage that can also do that to other people and yourself if you're not careful? If you're really stupid, you can kill yourself driving a car, but it's a bit harder. Still, though, you can really fuck your life up and crash a car properly. Properly. Um, yeah. But it's like, people don't really get it, you know? I think it's the kind of people who would also be scared of rock climbing and, you know, people who are scared of getting hit in the face so would never do a martial arts sport or, like, spa or, you know? The kind of people who are, like, kind of like the wallpaper paste of humanity who are a bit like, I don't like adrenaline, can't get on a roller coaster, can't watch a scary movie kind of people. Probably scared of spicy food and, like, goosebumps stories, <laughs> you know? It's just the kind of people who just don't understand the thrills of nearly killing yourself every now and then. I mean, nothing wakes you up in the morning than fucking up launching your bike properly and managing to pull off a fucking wheelie by accident, because that's what happened to my mate. Started his Kawasaki in the morning, and he stalled it, and frustrated, he put the he pinned the revs up too high to just, go, to just get off, because, fuck, I looked like a twat. Pulled this epic wheelie and nearly fucking threw himself off the bike. That's what bikes do. <laughs> you can't get angry. Get tilted, you will be tilted off the bike. 
but yeah like it's a, it's actually really good for your like mindfulness because it's like they demand that you do nothing but drive because if you don't you tend to fuck up and when you fuck up on a bike there's always a high risk you're gonna like do something that injures you or damages the bike because a lot of things can go wrong on them if you drop them <laughs> drum solo I like that bike yeah a lot of things can go wrong on a bike um, a lot of things Uh, well, just as many as a car, really. But, uh, you know, it requires focus, because you fuck up even a little bit, and you, bam, you really hurt yourself. Even from stationary, you just go, oh, I forgot to put my foot down, bang. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, you're never going to forget to put your foot down, because your body goes, I'm falling. <laughs> like, you know. But, man, it's like the same thing as, like, I met people who are like terrified of heights but rock climb and they rock climb at a higher level than I rock climbed uh, when I was doing it and you're thinking maybe we could try something else just for the sake of the LP uh, whales whales or sugo sugo Yes. Oh my god, the low times on this. Yeah, you meet a lot, and they're like, they're outdoor climbing, they're lead climbing, and they're terrified of heights, and you're thinking, so you're going to die in the way that's probably, like, haunted you in your nightmares for a very long time if you're very terrified of um, climbing, uh, of heights, because you're going to be on the top of a cliff and unable to climb up, and you're going to be like, and it's a horrible feeling, actually. Ooh. This is time trial? No. Oh. Overtakes... I need to read more often than none. Cool, this bike feels cool in the straights. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm sold. Now that the traction control's up and it's not pulling out on me like a fucking madman on every corner, you know? I'm really getting behind this kind of uh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, Ugh. it wasn't fine, oh, they count them down if, oh, you lose one if they go by you, shit, No! Don't be mean, it's my second day. I cry like Big Babby. Big Babby. Shit, 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 shit. Using too much. Speed! Lucky if I'm gonna make third of this. Great! Aww. Oh, overcooking every corner, man. I think I can break more aggressively than I think, you know? There we go. This is a cool bike, too. <laughs> 14, I need one more. <laughs> well, that was one more. <laughs> Killed number 15. Well, that fucked my score up. I'm gonna have to do that again now. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have killed that guy. Shit. Oh. <laughs> 
to try again, because that, that feels like I could have done it if I wasn't an asshole. Um, yeah, I think it's important that you face your fears in this life, because um, so many people I know, they do the thing that scares them the most, and those people are often the most like open-minded and free kind of people, because they feel like they face the thing that scared them the most, and it's always the feeling of, I don't think I'd like it because I haven't experienced it, and it's that fear really of not knowing. Like, you fall off a climbing wall once, you're like, I know exactly how that feels like. It's not pleasant, but I know what it feels like now. So you know what to expect, and once you've jumped off a wall once or twice, you're like, yeah, it's free falling ain't that scary, you know? Well, it's not free falling, you're on a rope. When you're being belayed anyway. And it's like, it's like people get scared of like being punched as well. That's another big thing for people. They're like, oh, if I get punched, I'm going to die. And all of this dramatic shit. It's going to really hurt and I'm going to cry and everyone's going to think I'm a huge bitch. It's like, well, actually, like, it doesn't hurt as much as you think. Like, I've been punched everywhere, man. I got punched in the balls by one guy. Roundhouse kicked in the balls because he was getting way too low of his practice when I was doing Thai boxing with him. And, uh, yeah, to be honest, not the best feeling, <laughs> like, you know, but, like, I now know what that feels like, and I know that I don't want to repeat it, but, like, I do know that it's, you know, you live through it, man. You live through a lot. A lot of people get worried is, uh, if you burst your eardrums, they grow back. Like... A lot of people worry that you can just go deaf because they hear, oh, that guy, he got punched in the ear when he was boxing and he, his eardrum burst and he can't hear as good. And it's like, yeah, you can't hear as good, but it does grow back. He doesn't go deaf. You know, it, stuff like that, man. It's like, we've all gotten a little too scared of like the basic stuff. And it's like, dude, at the end of the day, human beings are pretty good at surviving weird shit like that, you know. We're designed to take a lot of hits and physical damage throughout our lifetime, so it's not that big a deal. As everyone makes out, it is now that, oh my god, he got in a fight. It's like, yeah, it's not the end of the world, though. I mean, you know, it can be if you really fuck up, but like, <laughs> I don't, don't go out and start fights. So don't go, dude. What am I even talking about? You can tell I'm hungover. I'm just talking bullshit. I used to be terrified of roller coasters, and one of the guys I hung out with at college was obsessed with taking us all to theme parks. He was always like, let's go to the theme parks together, and I'd just be walking with them, and then they'd be like, right, you're going on this. And it would be like this massive roller coaster, and I'd be like, shit, I'm gonna die. And then I realized it was really not that scary. King of leaning. I thought it was a king of learning. So, well, that's a bit of a backhand. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can deal with uh, silver. It's better than no metal. Okay, one more, and then I'm going to change the LP over. Start a new session. Probably going to do Doom. I think I'm going to have to do Doom or I could start a Kami. I'm never going to start a Kami at this rate. It's nearly four. I'll check my phone after this. I'll do one more race, like I said. I'm probably pissing somebody off. There's this. There's a certain someone who texts me a lot lately. Let's try the 80s again. Because I only tried a few, didn't I? And I kept fucking up, so I kind of want to give it another shot now. I'm not really feeling that one. Canto was quite hard. Stilvio, I do like Stilvio. We didn't try this one. It's a time attack. Yeah, let's go for it. The naming conventions. This is called the 851. It has exactly 851 CC. There's a monster 696. It has exactly 696 CC. And then there's some that are like called the monster 900 or something like that. And it's like 860 something CC. And you're like, what? Random naming there. 
Are you being accurate or are you being vague? Pick one. Time attack. I forgot I was holding the rear brake. I was like, why am I not going? <coughs> Ugh. Sand bad. Road good. And my watch you can break during the turns. What's this wizardry? Multitasking? <laughs> I was feeling it then. Really feeling it. Kind of shaky coming out of that one. Shouldn't have broke then. Ah. <laughs> That's what happens if you break too hard. <laughs> it just goes, <laughs> falls on its side. It's like, what are you doing? Well, I'll say bye bye to first. Oh, only just bye bye to first. Oh no, very bye bye to first. I thought the finish line was here. Oh, oh, that's not good. Oh, that's. Can't pass the finish line on my ass. Let's go. There's a record, guys. Time to beat, though. I have. Oh, I have so many laps, they don't just go one lap. Fuck you, you didn't do it. <laughs> Oh no. I take every corner wrong. So I bought this game and now I just want to buy a Ducati. So it's just a big advertising swindle. <laughs> so I'm like, look at all these bikes, it's so cool. So when I play Outrun and I'm like, ah, oh, Ferraris are okay. Then I play Outrun and I'm like, I want a Ferrari. <laughs> literally the full process because obviously you get a Ferrari <laughs> it's okay I made it really thought I lost it then you notice the wing mirrors are always blue sky and clouds even when it's like overcast it's kind of pissing me off uh, yeah, because obviously the thing that Ferrari owners don't tell you is every time you get behind the wheel of a Ferrari, uh, Shiny World starts playing and you can do sick drifts on the freeways and no one will stop you. That's, that's why people want to buy Ferraris. That's why they're so expensive. Because can you imagine a world where everyone's drifting Ferraris all day and guitar solos are playing and there's some weird girl hitting you the whole time for some reason. What was the point of her in Outrun? Was she just a reflection of how bad you did? Because like whenever you got the whenever you lost, she just started punching the shit out of you. Fucking outrun chick. And she wasn't even good looking. She looked like Ashley from Resident Evil. She just annoyed me. I was like, why are you here? fuck up every corner lately. I don't know what my best time was, I was too busy talking about the, the weird polygonal Ashley Graham chick from Outrun 2006, which I had on the PS2, and that was late era PS2 I bought that for like less than 20 quid at the time, and I was like, this is sick. 
I ever get a good emulator on anything, and I ever get like a computer that has a good hard drive, like, I want to get a gaming rig at some point, but my transient kind of nature from my teaching and travel kind of style career means I have to wait until I settle down before I buy something that's like that big. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna like get a good emulator and I'm just gonna play shit like that. Can you, is there anyone, anywhere that you can emulate Criterion games like Black and Burnout Revenge and um, Burnout Free in that? Because I would just go through and retro LP all of them because fuck, I am stuck in a very specific era of late PS2, early Xbox, and I never really got out of that era. I like, you know. weird generation to get fixated on, I know, but like, still got a lot of love for the PlayStation 1 era too, because that was my childhood. Like, oh, stoppy there, almost a stoppy, fucking hell. <laughs> and I fucked the corner. It's okay, my, what they don't tell you is the guy's actually attracted to sand, so every time I face plant him into the sand, he's like, yes. Just like my ostrich face wants to be. So that was on hype. I almost want to end on a win, but then I think if I keep doing it, it's going to be like a two hour long video, so. Nice bike, I'm bad. Oh, let's have a look. I mean. I just don't. Yeah, I'm just going to stop there, fuck it.